This is the first uh, open coffee book of uh, Rapid. Uh, it's uh, part of uh, the so called uh, open coffee book event, which uh, deals with uh, and organizes unofficial uh, kind of like back meetings between entrepreneurs, investors, and generally people interested in uh, innovations. Uh, there are not that many people here, unfortunately. It's a humble beginning, but nevertheless, it's a beginning. Uh, so, thank you for being here. Um, before we continue, I would like to tell you a few words about a friend of ours, a member of our foundation. His name is Kevin Sarafo. Just a second. So, um, yes, our friend Kevin uh, was uh, recently diagnosed with some living cancer and will be very uh, great for you if you help us uh, with uh, small donations uh, in, in his name. He's currently being treated in Mexico on his uh, disease. Uh, we have uh, prepared some t-shirts for, uh, for you. Everybody who donates more than 10 dollars on the back of the day will receive a free t-shirt. So, uh, welcome to, to the event. Uh, before we continue, uh, I would like to introduce you a little video from the startup, uh, the last startup at Sofia uh, event. It was a big uh, conference that was held in the, and organized by the Startup uh, Foundation. So we'll play the video and we'll go ahead with our uh, guest lectures. Thank you. singer than <laughs> like a presenter and um, I will try not to use the microphone just tell me if it is okay uh, if I speak like this will everybody okay so um, I will try to speak up 
I'm very happy to be part of uh, all this uh, stuff that you just uh, saw. And um, before uh, before starting with um, the startup ecosystem and uh, uh, the topic of the today's um, uh, presentation, actually, I want to tell you more more about myself and why I'm here today. I will try to be short, brilliant, and gone. Um, but uh, I'm not very good uh, at being short anyway. So um, I'm Polina, uh, Poli. OK. Um, and um, I'm um, proud to be co-founder of Startup Foundation, established in 2007. And um, when uh, Nikki told me that I have to, that I, it's good to have some presentation, I just adapted uh, uh, one uh, that I was um, using for a different purpose and just changed uh, the um, the. The line uh, with uh, things happen because I just want to tell you that uh, if you want to to do something, uh, it will happen sooner or later. So you you just have to to try it, and I will tell you my story. That is actually start a foundation story in 2007 when I um, got in uh, in uh, the university. Uh, I, my dream was to, to become an employee in the state administration. Uh, I really wanted to I really wanted to be a secretary uh, in, uh, uh, in the state administration. So my first dream came true in 2007 when I uh, went to one of our ministries and spent three months of my life there being something like a secretary. So. So I, uh, I understood that this was not my uh, real dream. So uh, then, when I uh, then I met a person called uh, a colleague of mine called Valo, and um, he he was smarter than me. So I realized this at that point <laughs> and decided that uh, it's very good to to keep close with him. And uh, uh, I believe this will open my eyes for for some something uh, very interesting. So I I joined joined his team that first consisted of two people, me and uh, Valentin, and he told me that he has a great idea, uh, but he he doesn't have anyone to, to share it with, and uh, he, he needs uh, help to, to realize it. So he shared me an idea of organizing a conference. And uh, um, the conference uh, he imagined was about entrepreneurship, about inviting people uh, who are successful entrepreneurs to, to tell their stories. So it sounded like uh, rocket science to me uh, in the beginning. I, I thought it is um, something great, but we didn't uh, uh, have the slightest idea how to, how to do it. So we just sat down, invited three more people, and our team was uh, consisted of five people. So in 2007, we made the first startup conference at uh, the University uh, for um, uh, at the Economic University in Sofia, and we had uh, 808 attendees. So we we expected uh, 100, but this was uh, um, something um, very very good start. So since uh, 2007, we established Startup Foundation, and um, now uh, we are doing uh, the um, the biggest uh, forum for entrepreneurship in Bulgaria called Startup Conference uh, 2000. Uh, Startup Conference, and uh, what you just saw was uh, Startup Conference 2012, uh, our fifth uh, annual edition of uh, the conference. Uh, and so, before um, uh, before starting uh, mm, telling you more about our events, I just uh, want to to tell you more about what does it feel to to be an entrepreneur or just um, to 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 be working to be self-employed. Uh, when you, as I said, that things uh, really happen, um, you, you just uh, have to put, uh, as you all know, a lot of efforts in whatever you're doing. But when 
you forget about um, usual stuff like you are in a hurry and you uh, you are going into um, DHL car instead of a taxi, of a taxi, then you you realize that you are really doing something that you are really fond of, <laughs> and when you realize that it was a DHL car, not a real taxi, when you want to pay the driver and he says uh, actually no, there is no need. I just decided to to do a favor. So this is um, uh, when you. <laughs> yes, I was running very fast after that. Uh, <laughs> so um, this was uh, just uh, just a story and. Um, Maybe uh, to tell what is the startup foundation about. It is the philosophy of young people of um, being uh, just themselves, to of being free and uh, feeling the uh, entrepreneurial spirit. B because sometimes you don't know uh, if you have it or not, if you want to be an entrepreneur or not, because you just don't know what it is like, and you haven't met the real entrepreneurs, people who has um, who have. Uh, uh, told you their stories. So first, we wanted to inspire uh, the young people and to to help them uh, make their dreams come true. We didn't know how, and but we just put them on one place and we invited success to, uh, successful entrepreneurs. So. Our second um, uh, idea was to create an ecosystem of startup companies, uh, and uh, this um, actually uh, turned out to be harder than we than we expected because at the, that time there were almost no opportunities for financing your business um, in Bulgaria. So we, but but we believe that uh, in in one future point we will see all this. Uh, uh, startup companies uh, appearing in a community and in a common ecosystem. So um, I think that we are very, very close to, to it now. And actually, we do already have uh, our ecosystem. Dylan will tell us more about it in a while. And. Um, Yes, we had the idea of uh, having uh, many successful businesses in Bulgaria. We, we really uh, believe this will uh, make, a, uh, make a difference in our society. It was too idealistic, but uh, we, we can see uh, the, the results already. And we, we have uh, um, a global outreach of our uh, companies. So uh, what we are actually doing is um, uh, a few a few projects, as I already mentioned, our annual uh, uh, startup conference that um, is um, more about um, inspiration, about uh, meeting uh, new and interesting uh, people, and uh, it's about sharing uh, good practice uh, and um, business knowledge and know-how. Uh, Open Coffee meeting started in 2008 because uh, we wanted to have some regular meetings, not only one uh, big uh, annual event. So uh, we just decided to launch um, informal meetings like Open Coffee format. When we um, uh, got uh, together uh, once uh, in a month in a place like this in Sofia in a, one very very small bar in the beginning. So we invited anyone who, who wants to meet interesting people. Um, and to, um, we, we decided to start inviting um, investors. Uh, or potential business angels, people who are interested in investing in startup businesses, because as I said, we didn't have any, um, almost uh, any um, funds or funding uh, institutions that were um, giving um, acceleration and seed funding. So uh, the, the third thing is startup uh, weekend, uh, we decided to, um, make uh, in uh, 2010 the first startup weekend that is a global event uh, um, simultaneously done in 70 countries and towns and it is um, about starting a business within uh, 54 hours and the interesting thing is that uh, uh, many people 
are getting together at one place, so uh, they are forming teams and working with these teams on a, a certain business idea. And within 24 hours, uh, uh, 54 hours, they have to present it in front of a jury. So it's uh, like a competition, and people like it very much. Now we are planning uh, to have more this year about them. I will tell you later about Startup Bootcamp. This is uh, our uh, long-term project about practical ed education for entrepreneurs. Yes, Startup Ed are events like Startup at Blagojevgrad that are uh, independently organized events. Uh, and uh, we have uh, done already uh, one uh, Startup Ed uh, Varna conference in uh, Plovdiv, in Blagojevgrad, in, in uh, Gabrovo. We are uh, also uh, having some events, but they are more like open coffee meetings. And a uh, project about uh, Startup Map where we want to, to locate uh, everything, uh, every living creature doing some something with uh, startup business. Uh, also, we want to include uh, funds, uh, business angels, but it's a, a long-term project that we are not ready to present yet. So what's coming in, two third, uh, two in this year uh, is, uh, as you can see, the same projects, mm -hmm. uh, but um, the new thing is that we are, uh, for the first uh, year, co-organizing uh, NASA Space Apps Challenge 2013. Uh, that is uh, a global challenge uh, for, um, uh, for creation of uh, applications, mm -hmm. and uh, Sofia will be one of the 50 places in uh, Bulgaria uh, in, uh, in the world. I mean, uh, where this format will, will take place for, for uh, second year in the world and for the first year in Sofia. And we are doing this uh, together with the Leric Academy, with um, the uh, US Embassy, the Technical University, and a few more organizations. So uh, uh, the, the information will be published soon. So if you are, um, if you join our pages in the Facebook, you will um, see more information on it, and uh, I, I will really be happy if I can uh, see you on 20th of April in Sofia or online. Um, about Startup Academy, as I told you, this is our long-term project uh, uh, that we will launch in one month, uh, and it is free of charge. Everybody who, who wants uh, to take part in it is uh, welcome to, to apply, actually, on the uh, next run, because so far we have 2020 applications, and we decided to close because we are not sure if we can uh, take uh, more of uh, them so far. Uh, Startup Weekend Mobile is the same as Startup Weekend, as I told you, but um, it uh, it will be organized in uh, in Sofia within two or three months. Um, Startup at Blagojevgrad uh, will uh, Nikki maybe will tell you more about it. Uh, we, we already had one the previous year and I want to say a big thank you to, to the team because the event was really great and uh, I, I hope this year's will be even better. Uh, so Yes, this was it, and I, I think I'm getting boring. <laughs> so uh, I want to, to invite uh, Dylan. Yes, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to go on with uh, Dylan from Milano. Hey, may I ask one question first? Uh, who here doesn't understand Bulgarian? Just you? <laughs> Two of you. Okay. We we have we have in in our first group of investee companies, we had uh, a guy from Romania, so we had nine, sorry ten Bulgarian teams and one Romanian team, and the whole office was speaking English because of them. So you are the Romanian guys now. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> So welcome everyone. Thank you, Nikki, for inviting me, and thank you, Polly, for telling everything about the Bulgarian startup ecosystem as it is. Uh, so Bulgaria, right now in Bulgaria, more is happening uh, and faster than I think anywhere else in the world. So in the last one year, a few amazing things have happened, like the startup conference, which was last year, but also the setup of the two investment funds for startup companies, which are Eleven, which I'm a co-founder of, and Launch Hub. So uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about what we do at 11. 
and maybe that's going to help you in the long run, you know, thinking about growing your own business and starting your own business in the future, you'll be able to, you know, really use whatever we do as a uh, as program. Uh, so uh, I am Dilan. I am one of the four co-founders of Eleven, together with uh, two other chaps from Bulgaria, Ivailo and Daniel. And also uh, our fourth co-founder, uh, his name is John Bradford. He's from uh, UK. And he's been running accelerators for 10 years now. Uh, how many of you know what accelerators do actually? OK. I was just like that one year ago. So let me tell you, it, it all started one day on a beach in Greece. We were having beer with a friend of mine, uh, that's Ivo. And he said, you know, there is this thing happening in Sofia. We may be eligible for you know, running an accelerator program. Uh, and people are searching for someone to manage the program. Uh, do you want to join us? And I said, why not? But at the time, accelerators for me was you know, CERN, the Large Hadron Collider, elementary particles, and that was all I knew about accelerators. <laughs> that was 2011, probably August. Uh, it took us about nine months to do fin fundraising. Uh, so we started our program in April 2012. Actually, we started actually announcing what's happening. But let me tell you a bit about what accelerators do. Uh, Acceleration is the very first uh, funding source for startups. You know, usually people used until now uh, things called triple F, which is friends, family, and founders. Some people call them friends, family, and fools. So if you want to start a business, you have nowhere to find money other than from your friends, from your family, or if the founders have some money stashed away, then they can use them to start the business. In 2005, these things changed when a guy called Paul Graham, uh, who is the founder of a website called Bioweb, actually sold his business and he was thinking what to do next and uh, they started a program called Y Combinator in, uh, in the US, in Silicon Valley. And the way it works, they were providing uh, $18,000 for three months to uh, teams which were then on summer break from Massachusetts, uh, Institute of Technology or, I don't know, uh, the surrounding Stanford or the other university in the area. So what they were giving them money for was, so it, it was kind of a, not a summer job. So you can go to a summer job and work for, uh, I don't know, McDonald's and do hamburgers. And you're going to pretty much get the same amount of money, like $2,000 a month, as you can get from that. But in, in, in Y Combinator, you were working for your own company. So what they did is they funded, uh, I think first batch was about seven or eight teams gave them about $18,000 each, so that's living expenses for the team, so they can really focus on that project that they were doing. And then the team started working on their project. So actually, Y Combinator had a small equity in the companies in exchange for that $18,000, and then the team was actually working uh, technological mostly ideas in the domain. In 2004 and five. it was uh, web. It turned out to be very successful program, uh, some of the you know, very popular today web tools that you use probably uh, have been uh, founded with uh, Y Combinator. Uh, I don't know, how many of you use Dropbox? So Dropbox was one of the projects of Y Combinator. How many of you know what Airbnb is? OK, that's difficult. <laughs> that's a tough one. Anyways, Airbnb, is, uh, it comes from air, bed, and breakfast. You can rent a place in Blagojevgrad from uh, another guy who lives here. So you can rent it instead of staying in a hotel. Uh, long story short, it was founded uh, by guys who spent some time in Y Combinator. The way these programs go, you get some money, but this is not the important part. The money goes for uh, you know, actually covering living expenses. So you don't have to do anything. So one way to start a company is work for someone, for a big corporation. And then in your free time, you can do uh, work on your startup. It takes a lot more time, and you're usually exhausted, not so creative. Uh, you miss dedication and focus, uh, and the chance of failing is much bigger. The other way around is to uh, go into one of these acceleration programs. So what you do, you spend three months working only on that. You have food on the table. You have money to pay the bills, so that's taken care of. And you can really focus on what you're doing. That's what we do at 11, but I'm going to tell you about that later. Uh, the other thing that Y Combinator ac accelerators in general provide to the teams is uh, mentorship. When you know one, one of the key challenges in startups is when you hit uh, a roadblock, 
One way to solve it is to you know, read a number of books or go to university, spend three years getting an MBA. How many of you are doing that right now? Just one minute, okay, <laughs> wasting time. <laughs> the other way around is to ask someone who already hit that roadblock before you. And if he's very helpful and he likes you, he's gonna tell you how to solve the problem. So that's the second part of acceleration. You know, introduction to mentors who are helpful and instrumental in solving problems along the way and actually giving guidance and directions to the teams so they can really hit the market really quickly in that three months time they have in accelerating program to, to actually uh, build a product. And finally, uh, what accelerators provide is access to follow-up funding. So some of the ideas, of course, die. But the other is that don't, they need more money to, to actually uh, keep uh, developing. So accelerators introduce their teams to potential follow-up investors who can then uh, help them grow further. So that's in, in a nutshell what accelerators do. This all started, as I said, about seven years ago, 2005. I think the first batch was in, uh, in the spring, sorry, May of 2005. And since then, uh, there are many acceleration programs in the world. Uh, starting from uh, Y Combinator, which still exists. Uh, there is a program in uh, Boulder called Techstars, which is now uh, global. So there are tech Techstars offices all over the place. Uh, you should look up probably 500 startups, which is a great acceleration program. Uh, it's run by a guy called Dave McClure and some other people. Uh, some of our mentors have graduated 500 startups and it's awesome. And we're trying to do exactly what these guys do at 500 startups with our teams. Uh, in Europe, there are plenty of those as well. You probably have heard about Seedcamp. John, as I said, has been uh, the founder of Springboard. There is Ignite 100. And just, you know, all across the place, there are startup programs. There is Startup Chile. And people can go from here to Chile and start their own company. Uh, and uh, people have done that, obviously. So uh, this is part of the, actually, this change in the world has come from uh, probably along with the crisis, but has been accelerated by the crisis that hit the markets, because people believe the next growth will come from innovation, and you know each and every country by itself is trying to grow innovation uh, using startup programs like this one. So uh, our government, our Ministry of Economics, decided uh, probably about four years ago that we need to have some capital for startups, uh, mid-sized companies, and you know grown mature companies. Uh, and actually we did apply for that uh, acceleration program and we uh, were given 12 million euros to manage for startups from Bulgaria and actually from all over the world. The only condition is the companies need to be set up and registered in Bulgaria. So a few words about what we do and maybe some numbers. Uh, we do a two-stage program. It starts with acceleration, which is you know between three and six months. It depends. We are not the states, so things happen more slowly here in that part of the world. Uh, so in our acceleration stage, we provide our teams with money. We give them 25,000 euros for three months in exchange for 8% equity. And in, during those three months, uh, these teams spend the time in a you know, great space. You should come visit. It was uh, in the video that uh, Nikki showed. There was a startup event in, in our office. Uh, so we put them all together. So they work together, they meet. We have more than 200 mentors in our Rolodex. Uh, we have a partnership with Google. So Googlers come every now and then to the office and we send our teams to London to meet Googlers. I'm just coming actually from London. I came back on Thursday and we had the mentoring sessions with uh, probably 20 people from Google on Tuesday with our teams from our first batch. Very helpful. All that thing with the mentorship is very helpful. So uh, that, that's the first part, that's acceleration. Uh, people come to us with just general ideas, a team of two, three, five people, uh, some crazy idea, uh, they have enough talent and knowledge of how to, to actually make it work. So we fund them, they spend the time actually working only on their idea for those three months, work with the mentors, you know, shape the idea, fine tune it, and actually build a prototype. So at the end of the acceleration program, usually the first milestone for each product is a prototype. So it's something that people can use, you can give it to a thousand people, which are your beta testers or your early adopters, call it whatever you want. And then you can start getting feedback and actually start learning about your product and then improving it. After the acceleration phase, it may be three months, it may be six months. Uh, the good part is we have more money, so we have 12 million, which is quite a lot. This is probably the largest uh, acceleration fund in Europe, which is in, in Sofia, just 
an hour away. Uh, but uh, what we can do after the acceleration stage, we can provide the teams with seed money. So we can give them another up to 200,000 euros so they can actually start commercializing their idea and hit the market, spend some money on marketing, get their first paying customers, and actually start building revenue. And that's a good preparation for a first VC uh, Series A round where we can then introduce them to investors which can fund them at uh, five to 10 million euro valuations and they can get their next first million of investment money. So our idea is, we, we started that, we, we invest 25,000 at 300,000 euro valuation of the companies, then we follow up with valuations about eight, uh, 800,000 to a million euro of the companies, and then we're looking for the next round valuations between five and 10. Uh, how does the whole process work? The first part is uh, we seed projects. Uh, that's why we like to speak to young people like you because uh, most of the teams that we meet are you know, either still in university or just graduated. Uh, young people with you know, really crazy ideas and some of them may generally work. Uh, so we kind of you know, tell them what to do and how to do it and they apply. Our application is really simple. We have a 30 question questionnaire. We don't have any formalities, any documents need to be you know, presented, business plan or whatever. So we have uh, a short questionnaire. First time around, we had about 500 applications from around the world. The second application window, we had 300, but I, I should say better quality applications. Of those three to 500, we select the best, uh, probably 80 to 100. We give them calls. We speak with them for about 15 minutes each. And then uh, we select uh, shortlist 25 teams which come and do their pitches. And the pitching is a three minute presentation of the product and then uh, about 15 minutes of Q&A. And at, that, at the end of that uh, pitching day, we actually select our, you know, depends on how many good teams there are, but you know, anywhere between 10 and 15 teams to join our program. Sorry. Uh, okay, made it. So the acceleration phase, as I said, we ship them in Sofia, all the teams. We register new companies for each investment. Uh, we give them the money, probably in the very beginning. Uh, and they spend three months. The, the, the beginning of the acceleration stage is eight to 10 days of intensive mentorship. And mentorship actually happens. It's one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings between teams and mentors. But it's like speed dating. So all the teams are sitting somewhere and they have 20 minutes meeting with the mentor, they pitch their idea, the mentor gives them feedback, tells them how he can be helpful, and then they swap and the, the mentor goes to another team. So in the first 10 days, the teams usually have about 100 meetings with mentors, so they hear about 100 opinions of uh, how good or how crappy their product is and how can it get better. Uh, and then uh, the next three months, so which is you know three months but a week, uh, they spent actually developing it. So that's, that's why we generally prefer to have a hacker on the team as well as business people, so they can actually build something uh, early on. Of course, uh, after the mentoring sessions, some of the teams you know, fall in love with some of the mentors and vice versa. So there is a relationship being built between some teams and some mentors and they continue working uh, along the way. Uh, so this is one thing that happens during acceleration and the other thing that happens, we do pitch trainings. What we figured out is that uh, pitching in Bulgaria generally sucks very badly. Uh, people have no presentation skills and they have really hard time explaining their idea to an investor. It's a lot of humming and uh, and, uh, and this and that. So uh, we do pitch trainings because it's important. You have three minutes to impress an investor and if you cannot impress the investor in those three minutes, then you've lost your chance. So we do a lot of pitch trainings, uh, teams hate it, but we make them. At the end of that, they have a prototype. Uh, so they have a working demo, they have their first 100 customers, maybe not paying ones. They get their first feedback and they go through the uh, build, measure, loop, uh, build, measure, learn. How many of you know what build, measure, learn loop is? Nikki, you need to do lectures <laughs> in the university. So anyways, they, they start learning uh, feedback from the market about the, their product and they start improving it. So that's, that's, uh, that's what, they, what they do. And at the end of that, we can f uh, decide to follow up with more money. And we can give them, as I said, up to 200,000 euros uh, so they can really uh, you know, start marketing their product and getting their first paying customers. Uh, a few words about the 
team that's behind that. Uh, as I said, there's three of us in Bulgaria. It's Daniel, Ivo, and myself. Uh, Daniel is, uh, he, he has set up the first VC fund in Bulgaria, so privately held VC fund, called Sofia Ventures. Sofia Ventures, I think it was, or Bulgaria. It, it was something with ventures. Anyways, he's an entrepreneur. Uh, he's also spent some money in the investment industry. He's worked for Global Finance, where he met Evo, actually. So that's the relationship. That's how it's built. So they spent some time working on that. And then his last project, his, his last project before he joined Eleven was in uh, solar uh, energy. Evo, on the other hand, he's a professional investor ever since I've known him. And I've known him from university, which was 15 years ago. Uh, probably. Uh, it was being involved with uh, the first ever uh, private equity company in Bulgaria called Keresbeck, which was then called CEAF. And he then spent about 10 years at Global Finance, which is a 320 million euro investment fund in private companies. And then the last five years of that, he was the country manager for Global Finance for Bulgaria. So uh, myself, uh, I did more things than the other guys, I did spend some time as, uh, at Keresbeck, which was uh, venture capital. Then I did some work at ING Bank. Then uh, I did work as a financial manager of a company in Sofia. And the last seven years of my life, I spent as uh, vice president of Bedminster Capital Management, so which is another private equity company. Uh, we do uh, investments of 10 million euros plus in that part of the world. So we manage $320 million, actually. So generally, what we have as expertise, uh, I, I wouldn't say we are just entrepreneurs, although we've been working hands-on on some of our companies in our portfolios. But we have a lot of uh, uh, experience in investments and how to structure investments, how to exit investments, and how to manage investments. So our, our skill is in the investment process. Uh, our fourth partner, John Bradford, uh, he's been doing accelerators you know, the last 10 years of his life. He's been involved with the establishment of 10 accelerators across Europe, from Montreal to Moscow. Uh, he's the founder of the first accelerator in London, uh, so actually Cambridge, and he now runs a 13-week program in, in the UK. <clears throat> so he joined us and he brings in the acceleration expertise. So he's the guy who actually teaches us, he's our mentor on how to structure our program and how to do it best way. Uh, what else we figured out is that we cannot cover the whole region ourselves. I mean, we can attend events like that, but there are so many of those that we decided we need some extra help. And we have scouts in some countries. We have a scout in Romania, Serbia, and Croatia. So these are those three beautiful people. The first is called Ivan Brezan Brücken. Uh, he's a blogger of netocracia.com. Uh, second is Vukashin Stoikov. He's, uh, again, blogger. He, he, he's the guy who knows uh, Djokovic. He built his website. So that's why we love him. And the third guy is from Romania. That's Bogdan Yordake. And all three guys have been heavily involved in the startup communities in their regions. And they are uh, strongly affiliated with Eleven. They send us teams. Uh, they uh, you know, create their own events and invite us so we can speak to people like you in their own countries. Uh, I've been speaking about mentors for some time now. We, uh, as a, again, uh, we have more than 200. But uh, our mentors are just people from all walks of life. Uh, we have mentors which are. Uh, entrepreneurs, some of them successful, some of them not. And I, I must tell you, the not successful entrepreneurs are probably more valuable than the successful mm -hmm. ones because they know how to fail. Uh, we have uh, functional managers of large corporations like Bulgarian companies, international companies. And generally, it, it's a big bunch of people. And uh, each and every one of them has something to say to the teams when we introduce them and meet them. But generally, it's two or three people that work with each of the teams uh, going forward. As I said, we have a, a strategic partnership with Google, and that's, uh, that's a first for Google. Uh, we are the first ever acceleration program from the world that actually managed to, to get to Google and bring them on board. And what we get from Google is all the technical expertise that we need. So if any of the teams has some issue with technology, we have people who know people in Google that can help me. Uh, we also have all the business people of, of Google available. So uh, they you know, participate in mentoring sessions, like the Googlers from that part of the world. But also what turned out to be very valuable was that meeting that we had with our teams in London, with the Googlers from London, because it's, it's completely different dynamics from sending a few people here 
uh, the other way around is much more helpful, sending all our teams and then meeting you know, 20 or 30 people from Google London uh, with the teams and actually giving them the opportunity to discuss their projects and ideas. The whole magic happens in Sofia. So we make all teams come to Sofia for the program, including the international ones, like the Romanian guy over there. <laughs> and this time around, we have more international teams. We have a team from Serbia, two from Croatia, sorry, two from Romania, and one from Croatia. And we have actually applications from all over the world. So this time around, we are generally speaking English because we have to. And the roof is great. It looks like that. So we have, uh, that's the working space, that's the Kiss Corner, uh, and that's John. So that's what we do in a nutshell. Again, uh, you can find us here, more information about what we do and how we do it. If anyone, guys, of you has a project and is considering you know, actually starting working on it, we have an open application till February 3rd. So you're more than welcome to apply. And uh, we do you know, quarterly cycles. So uh, if you don't apply this time around, next time we will be in three months time. So everyone is welcome. Uh, we are very caref carefully you know, reviewing all our projects. So if you have a crazy idea, come and join us. Thank you. about uh, the questions, I just want to share an experience because I already applied for 11, but they didn't approve my uh, project. <laughs> Actually, they asked us for me um, to present the project. And this was the, the first successful step for, for my team. But at the end, uh, we didn't have a deal. I guess they didn't like us, but uh, at least you, you have to try because so don't uh, be even... for that for the, the rest of my life, right? Uh, for the next life as well. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, the good thing for uh, applying and not being approved is that at least you will have the good feeling for uh, having them read a um, hundred, uh, no, four hundred and one uh, uh, applications instead of four hundred. Uh, so, <laughs> this is not bad at all because uh, um, otherwise, uh, half an hour or more they could yeah, have yeah. spent on the beach. Listen, listen, guys, these are half truths. I mean, we approved them and they decided not to join us. So, oh. don't listen to Polly. <laughs> because they had a very special requirements, uh, and uh, we we didn't agree, but um, they didn't approve us. Right. So, any questions? Fine. Right. Yeah. yeah, may I ask, uh, what, are the, what are you looking for uh, from the uh, what, what are you looking for when you review a company? And can you give us some examples of the companies that you've already approved? Sure. I mean, what do they do? How are they doing? I mean, are they successful to an extent right now? No? All right. So, uh, what we are looking for? Uh, as I said, it's a very short questionnaire. So, we don't have a lot to look for. But there are a couple of key things that we want to see uh, in an application, and we usually start with always start with the team. And uh, what we want to see in a team is first of all talent. So enough talent to start from the idea and build a prototype. So generally, we first time around we approve some teams which didn't have technical co-founders. We're never going to do that again because they spend the money on technology. So somebody building websites or stuff like this, and it doesn't work this way. Uh, so, uh, and, and the other thing is the teams need to have some expertise and to understand that domain. So they need to have an unfair advantage to everybody else that's doing something similar. So if you're, yeah, it is called unfair because everything else is fair. Uh, so teams are very important for us and actually, uh, thank you for bringing the subject. The reason we did not, you know, we did not come to an agreement with Polly and her team is that uh, one of the key uh, founders of the company. He was the technology person. He was the one who had all the expertise. He was going to do enough for that project to make it work. 
but he wasn't willing to commit to 100% of his old time. So he wasn't coming to Sofia, and he wasn't dedicated. He had much more important engagements, obviously, but uh, we want people to be fully committed. Because we are taking the risk, we are giving them 25k. We are not giving them 15 if they are not fully committed, we are not fully committed. But you are taking only 8%. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the commitment is very important for us. And if, uh, if we see a team where one of the co-founders, one of the core people of the team is going to do something else, I actually have a safety net uh, all, all along. And then if the project fails, then he can happily go and do whatever he wants. Our perception to that is that he's not giving everything, and he's not going to give everything for this project to succeed. So he may at some point in time have a fight with the other founders, just do something else, who knows. So that's why we want the founders to be the, the people which are actually working and developing the project, and we want to see as little outsourcing as possible in the first time around. And also that thing I said about the current time. They need to understand that space better than anyone else. The second thing, of course, we look at the idea and the market and the size of the market and how crazy the idea is. Is it already done by somebody else? Uh, how successful has it been done? Uh, why didn't it work the first time around? Or stuff like this. But uh, we look at the idea. The, the reason the idea is not so important is that generally, and what we saw in our first group, actually our first cohort started in September. And they are four months old now. So whether they are successful, we still don't know. But what we saw is after the mentoring sessions with, uh, you know, that they met really a lot of people. And all of them had one idea when they applied, and that idea changed. And for some of the teams, it changed a lot. Some of the teams stayed on the track, but for most of the teams, the idea changed. So the idea is more of a what market, what space, rather than the precise idea, because it evolves. And uh, so, so this, is, this is the core part. And of course, if somebody can show us that he has already been working on that project for some time now, so it's not like, let me think of a project to give to 11, to, to apply to 11 with, it, it's not really going to work. If it's a project which I'm already doing that, it's going to be very helpful if, if I get some money and some mentorship, that, that's what we like. That's the kind of project we kind of give uh, more uh, credit to. Uh, we, we kind of want to understand why this idea and not something else. So there, I call them ideas conceived in sin. People sitting on the table and say, let's think of a very crazy idea to build a startup. And then they think of something and they go out and do it. Usually the best ideas come from need and necessity. And people say, I can build this and it's going to help me. And then it probably can help a million other people in the world. So these are the best. And, and because people understand the pain, they're going to be much more helpful in actually creating the product. But th that's how most of the you know really successful companies, you know, hot uh, hotmail, started exactly like that, and you know, plenty others examples in the world. So, so this is what we're looking for. The, the projects in our first batch, uh, it's 11 of them. I'm not going to tell you about all 11. I'm going to just you know give some examples. Uh, we have a mobile application which is in fashion, so women can you know take photos of their clothes and then it suggests you know things to wear. Turns out, uh, an average woman spends about a year, a full year of her life sitting in front of the wardrobe, wondering what to wear. Two hundred and eighty-seven days is the statistics, ladies. No, <laughs> come on. Uh, and the average. <laughs> no. Yeah, right. It's not <laughs> number of, of, of uh, you know attire that a woman changes before she leaves home is two. <laughs> That's the average. Some people just do it once, so it means somebody does it. Uh, so this is one thing. Uh, suppose this solves a problem. Uh, you know, save some time and some uh, effort of uh, ladies. It's an iPhone app. So this is on one end. Uh, we have a uh, big data uh, processing company. So what they do is they skim the web, they analyze the news and actually sentiment analysis and uh, do what currently is available to large corporations. But, you know, it's a lot of, you know, people reading news and summarizing it. So that's called Sensica. The first one is La Buqueta. This is Sensica. Uh, we have uh, four guys which took us two months to understand exactly what they're doing. They're geeks, absolute geeks, no business person, which is, you know, not a plus. What they do is they connect all your devices. So from uh, each your device which is internet connected, so from your cell phone, you can actually browse the contents of your hard drive at home 
or a hard drive connected to your router. So you can generally, uh, you know, it's like Dropbox, but you don't have a limitation of two gigabytes. Rather, you can, you know, stream all your content from your hard drive on your device wherever you are. So you can watch your videos, you can watch, uh, you know, watch pictures, see pictures, listen to music, and uh, just, you know, real simple and easy to use. Uh, we have some guys which are helping people learn languages without actually learning. The way it goes is you listen to your favorite YouTube, uh, you know, videos, you know, uh, music videos, and then you have a karaoke style uh, the lyrics of the song. And when you click a word, it actually shows you the meaning in your native tongue. So generally, it's, it's called the Schliemann man. You know, Schliemann was the guy that you know found Troy a long time ago, and he was he knew 14 languages just by reading uh, books in you know the foreign language and the translation. So that's that's another one. Uh, another one, my favorite, the Romanian guy. Sorry about that. <laughs> I hope you don't take it personal. Uh, the Romanian guy uh, is doing. He, he's a single founder. This is something we still discourage, and you know, uh, we discourage even more now because he's now in a trap and he's depressed completely. So he needs someone to teach him the class. Yeah, you offered me a job actually. Yeah, he needs someone to give him a good teaching. Yes, every now and then. What he's doing is uh, he's building an algorithm, a uh, semantic algorithm, which when you're reading an article, let's say on TechCrunch, when you hit the button, it just summarizes the article and you just read the essential summary. And uh, it kind of summarizes down to one third of the original size of the article. So you you read less, uh, but you know exactly as much as you would if you read the whole thing. So enough for, enough for that. So the second time around, we had uh, only eight teams. But we had some teams, teams in gamification. We have uh, you know, a team in uh, veterinary medicine, software, like cloud based software for vets. Uh, By the way, for the female, sorry for interrupting, for the female part, this team with the creation guys is just perfect, so... No, that's we. That's we. Aren't they with the, Okay, there is, there is one team with a very nice guy, so you yeah, yeah. apply. <laughs> Squee, it, it's, a, it's a mobile uh, marketplace for indie gadgets. So it's uh, if you want to buy a really cool thingy for someone, you can just browse nice pictures and buy it from their application, which is iPhone. Nice anyway, so uh, generally, what the projects need to to, to have as a, you know in, in the deal, uh, you need to have the potential to get to a million dollar company. What we wouldn't invest is a corner shop or a piano bar or a, you know a new way to produce uh, you know donuts or whatever it is. So these things that cannot scale easily. We will generally discourage them because what we want to do is to see this project with our investments already hitting the market and working. We don't, we wouldn't invest in construction, manufacturing, uh, actually setting up large production facilities or anything like that. And what we will likely not invest like in general, but we may do every now and then. Uh, if we are running now an application for games cohort. Because we don't know a lot of games. The uh, last game I played is Doom 2, and probably most of you weren't born when Doom died. Uh, but uh, you know, we have people that come and help us, so we are working with XS Software, which is one of the largest companies in the gaming market in, in uh, that part of the world as well. Uh, but they are our partner to that, and we can work with them on that game cohort. We can do uh, green technology, again, same, same scenario, four or five good projects with somebody to help us. We can do energy efficiency, we can do medicine, medical projects, we can do uh, some science. But uh, that's, you know, that's yet to be seen. Alright, any other questions? Okay, anyone? This is your chance. Or you can buy me beer later and ask me. <laughs> yeah, one last question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I know, but uh, can you tell a story of uh, why did you name it Eleven? Oh, you know the story? Yeah. I told him. Yeah, the rest of you know. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. a secret. Oh, is it? No, no, <laughs> not, how, not how you came up with what, what it means. Exactly. You know? No. Okay. So oh, it came up came really easy. We were sitting in a, you know, in, a, in my office, at the minister's office at the time. Uh, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We wanted to go back home. We spent the whole day working on that application for that call. And we were thinking about names. And it took us two, two hours to think about springboards, trampolines, you know, Booster rockets, rocket engines, and everything like that. And 11, 11 actually, guys, is 11 is the escape velocity. Do you know what escape, escape velocity is? Yes. Going to yes. Yeah. I told you. Uh, escape velocity is the the speed to which you need to accelerate a object so it can leave the orbit of Earth 
So that's why 11, because we want to accelerate companies, so they leave the orbit of that, you know, Bulgaria, <laughs> and Central Eastern, and, and become global. So that's why 11. So uh, one of the best names. Uh, Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, well, thank you. Let's give a warm uh, thank to Alex. Have Alec. a question. More questions? All right, Alex, go ahead. Uh, out of, you said you had 2,000 applicants and something like that, right? Uh, out of those people, how many companies that apply for uh, exploration are service oriented, like apps or service and, and websites, and how many are actually manufacturing goods and stuff that requires an inventory? Okay, uh, it's not 2,000. Uh, first time it's 500, and second time it was 3, so 800 total so far. And we have about 200 in our third application window, so probably 1,000. First time around, people didn't really get it, so exactly what we're doing. So we had probably about 10 to 15 percent of you know stray projects. We had you know mozzarella distribution in Tirana. Uh, national sausages in Bosnia and Herzegovina, <laughs> uh, vegetable exchange in a city in Bulgaria, I'm not going to say the city because you're going to figure out who, me, who, who did it. So we had like 10 to 15 percent of really crazy ideas which doesn't, which don't fit in what we do. All other projects hadn't their done, done their homework more or less and actually knew what it's about. So uh, probably about 85 were in the services, applications, web, digital domain, but you know we still keep getting some in the second application we didn't have pretty much any which were uh you know not fit for acceleration other than maybe the toothbrush electric toothbrush that brushes all your teeth in the same time i guess it's a big device <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea we, we didn't we, we were too afraid to call in that but other than that we didn't have any crazy uh like this <laughs> No, I'll, I'll make a, I'll write a book once we finish that whole program about all the crazy ideas we had. But you know, this this toothbrush, it, it was I love when when they said, "What do you think the biggest challenge to your project is to your product is?" And it was, "It's gonna weigh probably two kilos, so it's not gonna be portable." <laughs> I have no idea how it looks. I don't want to know. Okay. Anyone else? Well, thank you guys, and uh, have a drink. This program is brought to you by AUBG Talks. For more, please visit us at aubg.bg talks.